This patient was referred for a dislocated lens and significant amount of prolapse vitreous. I'm going to start off by creating two paracentesis incisions. I'll also perform a subtenon block, which I perform that for all scleral fixated IOLs. I'll do a thorough anterior vitrectomy. And then what I want to do now is I'm going to mobilize this three-piece IOL, which was in the bag. I'm going to mobilize it up and out of the bag, and I want to place the haptics above the iris. So I'm using a micro grasper and a micro holder for that step. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other haptic. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to check the integrity of the haptic and to see whether they can accept the 30 gauge TSK needle. So to do that, I'm going to also create my main wound. And so here you're going to see that I'm going to push out one of the haptics out of the eye with my micro grasper here. And then I'm going to bring out my 30 gauge TSK needle. And I'm just going to make sure that these haptics, because remember these, this is almost a 16 year old IOL, make sure that the haptic um, goes in nicely into the 30 gauge TSK needle. Once I know that's the case, I know that the other haptic will be fine. Now I'm going to measure halfway across the corneal diameter because this plays a big role with centration. I'm going to put a wet sponge to keep the cornea moist. I want the rest of the field to be dry because I'm going to now um, uh, basically place uh, my marks two and a half millimeters away from the limbus and then two millimeters across. And of course you do that on opposite sides for the Imani technique. So this will be two millimeters across. This is the pass across, and we do it on both sides. Make sure that the orientation is correct. And that's that. Now, once the mark's done, I can remove the sponge. And then here's my 30 gauge TSK needle. I've got my micro uh, grasper in my other hand. And now these are PMMA haptics. So um, I'm going to be very mindful of the possibility of kinking. Here is the... Uh, needle and um, it actually goes in fairly nicely, fairly smoothly. Now, sometimes I'll put the, I'll keep the needle inside the eye. For this specific case, I decided to externalize the uh, haptic, and I vary, I vary my approach. Uh, you know, from one from one case to another. Uh, here, I'm just going to uh, feed a little bit more. I'm just being very gentle because of the PMA haptics. And so I'm going to actually externalize. Now just be careful as you're externalizing, the optic will also move. And so you just wanna, you wanna be very mindful of that here. Um, and so here comes the uh, haptic. Uh, I'm going to actually cauterize the, the tip here and you're gonna see that little flange. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, 30 gauge TSK needle, follow the marks and then angle point towards the optic nerve. And here you'll see the uh, needle there. This is, uh, the angle here is a little bit more tricky, um, but it actually, eventually here, it's a little bit more uh, maneuvers. Eventually the haptic slides. Now there's a little bit right there, there's a little bit of a kink. And I actually thought that once that kink happened that the needle wouldn't be able to externalize the haptic. And again, these are the PMMA haptics. They're a little bit more tricky to uh, maneuver, um, but I managed to actually, tr I'm trying to kink it back into position. And the moment of truth here is I'm going to externalize the needle. And again, the kink, I'm trying to reverse the direction of the haptic. Um, and again, I'm just trying to, I don't want the haptic to slip out in any way, shape, or form. And so just kind of taking my time. And here's the moment of truth. Either the needle will externalize the haptic or it won't. And uh, fortunately, it does. And the kink is not too big of an issue at this point here. I'm going to cauterize uh, the other, uh, the end here to create that flange. And then now you want to obviously tuck the haptics in and you want to look at the eye wall to see if it centers and of course you want to make sure that you tuck this in uh, deep into the interscleral path you don't want this to be exposed um, out through the conjunctiva because um, uh, that can cause a source of infection uh, it can cause irritation so i'm just taking my time here just pushing and you can see the iol uh, i'm reasonably happy with the IOL, but I, I'm going to also now do the same thing on the other side. And once the once both are tucked in, you can see that the IOL is well-centered. I've added Myocol. Um, 
And that's the end of the case. I hope you found this to be useful and thanks for watching.